Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of the Saguaro video series. Uh, this week we're going to be learning a little bit about the perils that Saguaros face and how this project is going to mitigate them. So we're going to go out with my coworker Tony today and he's going to tell us all about invasive species. So stay tuned. Hi, I'm Tony Figueroa, Senior Manager of the Invasive Plant Program. And here we are in a heavily infested scene of the Sonoran Desert. This is the type of scene that is occurring on a lot of our south facing hill slopes. Buffalo grass loves to invade areas that have that slight disturbance or a rock slide and a southern facing aspect to them. They're just growing on that baking hillside. And as you can see, they fill in all of the empty spaces available. And that is the danger that they create. They fill in this space and they make a continuous biomass of fine fuels that are readily flammable and spread very fast. The saguaro right here, when these grasses catch fire, if they catch fire, will be completely consumed with flame lengths up to 20 feet tall, 1500 degrees. And it spreads through this whole hillside, just burning everything in its path. When you lose the vegetation that's currently here, like this saguaro that's 70 years old, it takes a very long time to ever gain back the Sonoran Desert habitat that is lost from this invasive plant. This is public enemy number one for the Sonoran Desert, buffalo grass, native to Kenya and Africa, brought here by miners and agricultural industry, industries to try and create some good forage. Unfortunately, it escaped and has become quite the nuisance. Uh, it is generally a large, messy plant. It is a perennial plant that can live for several years in the ground. And when you are removing this plant, you need to remove its entire root base because all of these little nodes enable it to grow back. And that's why this plant does so well in a, in a fire system. The fire comes through, burns off all of this biomass up top, and then these just re-sprout. So if fire does burn through a stretch of the Sonoran Desert, this is the first thing that comes back because it has evolved with this fire ecology and will come right back. The Sonoran Desert has no adaptation for fire. So when we lose our plants to fire, it's going to be a very long time before we ever get them back. So one of the strategies that can be implemented any time of the year is manual removal of buffalo grass. But the key for any sort of invasive plant treatment is being able to identify your target species and make sure that you're getting rid of the non-native buffalo grass and not one of our local natives. So one of the keys for identifying buffalo grass is it has this bottle brush uh, flower structure on it. There aren't very many plants in our region that have an appearance like this, except for other non-native plants like fountain grass. Uh, it can range in color from when it's aged out like it is right now, being really tan, to having a purplish sort of color when it's healthy and actively growing. When you're manually removing buffalo grass, like I said, you can do it any time of the year. And here we have a nice buffalo grass specimen. Having a good tool, either a nice geo pick or a, a hori hori, which is a good little digging tool. So you just dig a little bit right around the base, making sure that you're able to rip it up, getting out all of those root nodules in it. Uh, one of the common questions I get is, do I have to get these spaghetti-like roots? No, it's okay if you leave any of those in the ground. It's just right at the base of the plant. There's a little node that is able to regrow. Ensuring that you have that out of the ground and there's no more uh, little nodes hanging out in the ground is an effective treatment of this plant. It's not coming back. Uh, after you've removed it, if you're removing a large patch and you have seed heads on it, one of the techniques we do is we fold it under 
and we create a little thatch pile so that the seeds are buried and we would fill this whole area in with a bunch of thatch grasses and that way it's deterring the germination of this plant after the next set of rains. Uh, none of this work is a silver bullet one and done treatment. Uh, buffalo grass loves disturbance sites. If you're ripping up buffalo grass from a large area like this, you're creating that disturbance. There are seeds on the ground and now the whole area is opened up. You must come back and follow up those treatments with diligent inspection for seedlings and get them before they're able to mature and set seed again. On an invasive plant project the size of this area and you have acres of buffalo grass that needs treatment, the most effective way of treating it is using herbicide. This is a perfect demonstration of an area that was fully infested with buffalo grass and was treated over the previous two years and there's only one plant regrowing in it. This was our boundary line over here and you can see how infested this area had been and the difference is quite distinct. Herbicide treatment is quite effective at controlling buffalo grass. So one of the main concerns that people express to me when we're doing invasive plant management, specifically herbicide applications to grasses, when you're dealing with an area that has a near 100% coverage of invasive grasses, this area right here was completely consumed with buffalo grass. These shrubs were present. We sprayed the buffalo grass at and around their bases. These are woody stem plants and they're not absorbing or susceptible to glyphosate quite the same way that a grass or an annual plant is. So we sprayed the buffalo grass in here and now the native plants are able to bounce back and occupy the space that they once held all to themselves. So one of the greatest challenges for invasive plant management is deciding which approach you're gonna take, whether it's a manual removal project or herbicide treatment. Herbicide treatments are what I recommend when you're managing sites that are large scale, but you must treat them when the plants are actively growing. And when you're working in the Sonoran Desert or any of our deserts, that can be a few weeks of the year. So you have to have a dedicated crew trained and ready to go for when the grasses become green. Having the crews that are trained on plant identification so you can tell What's buffalo grass? What's fountain grass? And what are our good natives like bristle grass and cotton top, tangle head? We want to make sure that the plants that we are treating are the enemies. We want to make sure that our good plants are able to persist here and drop seed and replace those non native plants. Herbicide treatment has its challenges. It's not easy, it's hard work. Um, manual removal also very hard work but manual removal can occur all year long the best place for manual removal is small infestations those new satellite populations that are appearing at the edge of an infestation under a quarter acre in your neighborhood along the medians of the streets if you take that effort to take it out right now you can save an area from becoming infested over the years to come a lot of this stuff that has invaded our area has been doing so for almost a hundred years and it's only within the last 15 years that people have really taken up the, the effort to do something about it and it is a big task but you can see in a place like this when you have skilled individuals focused on the work and treating in the right season you can have really high success results in managing buffalo grass and other invasive grasses. Invasive plant management is very challenging work, but it's very rewarding. When you come out to a site where you've done work that used to just be buffalo grass up to your waist, just like this dead individual right here, and now you return and you see our native plants thriving and seas of dead buffalo grass, it warms my heart 
to see that we're able to save this little piece of the Sonoran Desert from the invasion of buffalo grass and these fire-prone non-native species. We want to make sure that these saguaros are here for future generations as well as all of the other plants that are part of our Sonoran Desert plant community.